Hey, Bruce Naylor here. And uh, four months ago, I bought a MacBook Pro, the 15 inch with Retina display, and it's not perfect. And I'll tell you why right after this. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I always appreciate when you like my videos and I always enjoy your comments down below. Well, it's not every day you buy a $2,500 laptop. And uh, believe me, I did a lot of agonizing before I pulled the trigger and ordered this thing back in March. And of course, Apple would release a new, uh, a slightly you know, improved version of it a couple months after I bought mine, but that's neither here or there. It's still perfectly acceptable spec-wise. Uh, the laptop I bought, the model I bought, came with the 2.5 gigahertz uh, quad-core CPU, the i7, uh, 512 gig SSD, 16 gigabytes of storage, and the NVIDIA GT 750M graphics card. So very potent laptop for sure. Uh, and I use it every day, it's my daily driver actually. Uh, I'm doing things like running virtual machines, I'm running business software on the Mac, and I'm also using it for um, creating YouTube videos and be doing some podcasts with it and some collaboration videos somewhere in the very, very near future. So it's a busy machine. I, I, it runs constantly. It's always working. So that's great. But not everything is perfect about this Mac. In fact, there are some things that really get under my skin. So let's get started. Number five. It didn't come with a DVD drive. Now, I know for a lot of people that's no big deal. Apple already decided for me that was no big deal a long time ago. But I still have a need for DVDs. I've got relatives who don't have internet. They want to watch movies and stuff. We create you know, home videos and stuff. And creating it and burning a DVD is a great way to give it to these, these folks. I have to now get a super drive in order to create a DVD with this thing. I also have Office was a Mac Office 2011 or something like that on DVD. Now, yeah, I, there's some things I can do to, to get it, but the point is for $24.99, this thing, in my opinion, should have not only just a DVD drive, but a Blu-ray DVD drive, but it does not. Number four, there's no built-in Ethernet port on this thing. None, not a zip. This is supposed to be a professional level workstation class laptop, and it doesn't have a stupid Ethernet port. So you have to buy an adapter in order to use Ethernet with this thing. That's absolutely ridiculous. And believe me, when you're moving 4K video files back and forth, you appreciate having that gigabit Ethernet connection versus using even wireless AC, which I am doing right now. Number three, there's no built-in audio input jack on this. Why is that a problem for me? Well, if you're working with audio and guests, such as a Skype call-in, then you got to do some fairly complicated audio routing. And the technique that I think works best and works for me is called a mix minus. That means that I'm sending the caller the audio back minus his own voice. So he hears everything else that's going on except his own voice, no echo. That's real important. Now I have to purchase a USB uh, adapter that has your audio in and out jacks. An additional expense that for this kind of money should be on this laptop. Number two uh, is the fact that I run dual displays. Both of these are Kunix, they're 27 inch 1440p displays. Very nice panels, do great color uh, reproduction on them, but there's one hiccup. I have two Thunderbolt ports that can be used for uh, mini display port. And I also have an HDMI output. The problem with the HDMI, when you hook it up to an external monitor uh, and you go to check the color space, it looks kind of weird. The reason being is the MacBook Pro is telling the monitor why you're a television set. So you can't take advantage of the wide gamut color space of the monitor. The workaround is to buy an HDMI to DVI cable, then it should work. Or you can hack some certain files in the Mac, MacBook Pro, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But the bottom line is that's the cable I don't have laying around. I don't have HDMI to DVI cable. So that's another expense. But out of the box, it doesn't work very well. That's absolutely ridiculous. It should detect um, just fine and let me take advantage of the full color space of the monitor, but it does not. 
And finally, number one, 16 gigabytes of memory. Somewhere Apple in their egocentric way decided, you know what, 16 gigabytes of memory is more than enough for a professional. Remember, this is a professional grade workstation class laptop. And I cannot upgrade the memory. What you see is what you get because it's soldered to the motherboard. It's soldered to the motherboard. And uh, there's nothing more you can do about it. And the thing is, when you're running virtual machines or you're doing big projects in Final Cut Pro, for example, those programs love RAM. Motion loves RAM. Compressor loves RAM. All this stuff loves memory. And Apple said, we're going to let give you so much love and that's it. Can't upgrade it. And I've got to make sure that somehow that 16 gigabytes of RAM is going to be enough for the next three to four years that I keep this laptop. Hopefully that will be the case because I don't upgrade every one or two years. Ain't got that kind of dough. But uh, those are some things that really piss me off about this computer. But in all fairness, I'll make a video telling you the five things I like the most about the MacBook Pro. But I look forward to your comments down below. Bruce Naylor with Frugal Tech. I'll talk to you later.